Okay, hello everybody. <laughs> Second try on this one. First one I got interrupted by a phone call. But yeah, I hope now we're gonna be. Uh, as I said, uh, no, you haven't heard it. It has been a rough work week for me. Hope to make the next one shorter. But I'm actually quite happy that now there's Nations League play. Um, I probably will still watch the Austria Nord Ireland game. Although there's Greece, Hungary and Croatia against England, but Croatia against England is in front of an empty house. And if I've seen anything in the past week, uh, weeks, watching a game that is with no spectators is just one of the most boring experiences to watch. Even a great game will not become great. There's just something missing. I see you have the sun. So I'm kind of a sh shadow, I guess. So yeah, um, probably will go for Austria against Northern Ireland, although I'm not really excited about that one. May have to switch around a little bit. We'll see how I fight will go. I'm also quite tired. So, and we have a big, a big day tomorrow at home. No, but what I wanted to uh, talk about is actually ways to improve the Nations League. I think I've hinted at it in previous videos. There are a few things that I think can be made to make the Nations League a better thing and I just wanted to collect my thoughts on this a little bit more uh, dedicated fashion. I think the first issue is that I saw is um, attendance, especially in the lower leagues. I mean, if there is uh, Germany playing against France, of course you play to the full house. No, it's not gonna... It's not gonna um, uh, work if, say, Bulgaria is playing Norway. And there's just not too much interest, especially you cannot fill a big stadium. I actually think the Nations League should be used by uh, smaller federations to go and not play in the biggest stadium of the country. I again take the Bulgaria against Norway example. If uh, Bulgaria plays, say, in Plovdiv or Burgas, or, you know, even in Rasgrad, I mean, yeah, they have a new stadium. I think they will get a lot of spectators there and it will be a much better experience for everyone. You don't need to play this in Sofia. So that's the first thing. Or, or you know, Spain does it, that they usually play all their games in a different uh, stadium. They don't have this fixed uh, home stadium. And I think for Nations League play this is absolutely all right. If you don't expect as many spectators, go to a smaller city. Uh, I see Austria is playing today against Northern Ireland in Vienna. Uh, 21,000 tickets are sold. They're not even sure if all of those will come to the uh, game. That's horrible. Honestly, that's horrible. And there is a little bit of excitement about it because uh, the win against Germany in the pre-World Cup friendly still is kind of showing its influence, but everyone's gutted by the loss to Bosnia. So yeah, uh, that for me is an absolute must. Uh, go to smaller cities, go to smaller stadiums, give uh, the team the atmosphere. The other thing to fill the stadiums is, of course, don't be so anal about your kickoff times. Uh, have them at least adjust by time zone. I don't understand if why you play in Eastern Europe, where you have an hour time difference to Central Europe. So what's 8:45 here is 9:45 uh, in one time zone further and uh, going to the Ukraine I think it's even a two hour difference or at least Turkey <sighs> yes some cultures stay up later but some cultures don't I think there should be a little bit more flexibility given I think it's also better for TV uh, I understand you want to have it a little bit more blocked I forgot that I have the music on but I'll leave it on as a background to music uh, you gotta have it blocked to have a little bit more predictability because when you uh, remember how the how, how it was for the uh, European qualifiers before they did all the branding, 
uh, you know, you had times all over the place. Maybe you can make a few more slots, but I think it should be a two hour time different slot. And then let the Federation choose for themselves. Um, I really think this can have a big impact on speckers. For me, uh, I would love to watch some Nations League play. Uh, I love to watch my national team. When I was in Vienna, I tried to go to games. I just decided after the Brazil game in 2014 that friendly games are not for me, but if there is um, a game, it's kind of, uh, you know, a competitive fixture, not a friendly big fixture, I love going. Uh, and at least in Austria, the national team is still a, a bargain. Uh, the prices are good and uh, honestly the soccer was good, so I like to go. And I think many people are like that. Of course, some uh, have a little bit more club allegiances. So that to me is almost a must to actually make it a little bit more attractive for the spectators. Also find maybe some other solution. I know that you want to get spectators and all those racial elements out that are now plaguing Ukraine or Croatia, um, but it seems like there are quite some and it, I don't think it helps. I really don't think it helps. I think you need to go after those people, identify those people, get them out of the stands. And especially with Croatia, it's an ongoing issue and they want that, uh, that this is ha ha happening because it hurts the Croatian Soccer Federation. So, because they want to get rid of all the corruption. So, that's something I can definitely be done. But then I have uh, some larger issue with it that now, if you look at uh, promotion and relegation, I think that I'm afraid and at the moment I'm just going through it in my head more than seeing it play out and yeah we have to see I mean if there are more installments of this and I actually hope there will be and we see this uh, at least three or four more times what I'm afraid is that it, there are too many teams that get relegated too many teams that get promoted I understand why they do it because you don't want to have um, because of how the European qualifiers are now set up, you cannot really have the. You need to have dates open, and so you all you can block the teams that are in the final four, because we know who will be in the final four, and those teams will be put in a qualifying group that has a smaller uh, amount of teams, and the rest it works out nicely. However, having said all that, I really, really think that. Four teams being relegated, four teams being promoted, it's too many. Uh, I think I would be more okay with two up, two down. And I think you could or, or uh, do a playoff system, have maybe, um, give two fixed uh, relegation spots. Uh, by having a playoff between the teams, like the final four, where you actually, um, you know, make a draw, those two teams play play for a spot going up. You have a play down also with the last place teams for the teams that are going down. So the winner stays, uh, uh, the loser goes down. And now the loser of the lower league and the winner of the play down, they play maybe additional games to see we stay or do we go? I think that might create quite some excitement in addition. I know it will add games, um, but I think it will be worth it. I think the mixture could be too great, especially if I look at, I look at a League B. Um, of all the League B teams, and there are 12 of them, only four will play in League B uh, next time around. Now. From one side I can understand that they are going for this mixture and that is that the European teams are overall very evenly matched and so um, and I see it I mean we have Serbian League C and they don't have anything to do with League C to be honest 
um, and the similar arguments can, can be made for other teams, um, say even Greece. Uh, who were in a qualifying playoff. You know, it can happen so quickly that a team goes up or down, look at the seeding lists at any qualification and then see who actually land, land at the top. And it's hardly ever one, two, three, four, five. There is a lot of mixture in between. So the seeding actually doesn't matter, that, hardly ever matters that much um, for European soccer. So for that, maybe the mixture is okay, but um, I'm a little bit more bothered by the fact that, you know, this is a tournament that happens every two years uh, and for that reason it's a little bit mm, too crazy. So I think make a playoff, make a play down, uh, something like that, to add maybe a few more interesting games, increase the excitement and maybe... Uh, don't make the mixture that bad. You can also only make one set of um, playoff games. Have all the first place teams of Group B, for, of League B, for instance, face all the last place teams in League A. That would be a simple, uh, simple fix, and do the same thing between B and C and C and D. I think that could also be a simple fix. Um, and yeah, maybe you need to make smaller qualifying groups for the Euros or just all together decide that whoever uh, is in the Nations League, you know, whoever is in League A and League B, that's 24 teams, those teams are in the Euros. And then make the pot. I think that would also be a, a way to go. Um, another thing that's, but I think this is a little bit harder to accomplish is the way the leagues are kind of designed. Um, you have 12 teams in each league, but they're split in four groups. I'm talking now A and B. Say 16 teams for C and D, or 15 and 16. Um, just bear with me. <laughs> uh, for instance, if I take, and uh, I'll stay a homeboy now. Let's stay with Austria. Um, Austria is playing Bosnia uh, and Northern Ireland, Sweden is playing Russia and Turkey and so on. You only play amongst those, there is a little bit too little mix mixture, I think. Um, just if you get a tough draw, you might end up in League C, although you're by far not a League C team. So a little bit more I don't know how to create this, but a little bit more interchange between the leagues might not be a bad thing either. Um, just my my feeling. Uh, maybe you can do something like you do in ice hockey, but you know, then then you need to make more system, more systems. Yeah. I think for a while it is to just create a quick competition. It's done quite well. Um, I'm still unsure why people are more likely to talk against than for it. Uh, because I think watching a competitive match is always better than watching, watch, watching a friendly match. And I think overall it will raise the standard of play all over Europe. You get more competitive fixtures uh, and you get opponents that are kind of even with you. And that always creates excitement. But I think also because of this evenness, it might create a little bit more randomness because we know soccer is a play of randomness, a game of randomness. Well, let me know A, what you think about the Nations League and my ideas. Um, if you think there could be something done about it to make it more uh, exciting. Again, we are just at the very beginning and it might turn out that this is the best, uh, it gets even better. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking at the moment. And I know it's surely not an ideal product, but I think it's already pretty darn good for what they're doing. Just a few things that could have been done better. Uh, but for now, I think they have to just manage too many requests. I also think of the groups of three are not that ideal. Uh, however, um, if you want to keep dates open for the big nations to play Brazil and Argentina, and let's face it, that's the reason why we have those dates. That 
we have a date where we can uh, play the big money opponents. So, uh, you know, if you're not in the Nations League uh, playing against each other, uh, France might want to play Spain. Say it like that, yeah. So if you uh, want to have those matches, uh, yeah, you should have it. Uh, you should keep this open. That's why we have groups of three, although I'm less thrilled about groups of three. But we will get very intimate with groups of three because that will be the new World Cup format starting in eight years. Well, again, let me know what you think about my thoughts about the Nations League in general, whether you have any ideas of things to improve. I'd be very curious to hear that. Maybe we can make some change. Give me a thumbs up if you liked that video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of those, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.